Hey guys, welcome to Farm Charm Chic. I'm Emily and today is a mega video for you guys. That's right, 25 of my favorite fall crafts that I have made this year. All in one place for your enjoyment. So sit back and relax and enjoy. Please remember to hit that like button and consider subscribing. Let's get right into it. I'm going to take this pizza pan from Dollar Tree and we're going to make a sign out of it. On the bottom layer, I put a layer of Mod Podge. My thinking with this is since I am putting a decal on it, I did not want my paint to uh, come up when I lifted that transfer paper off. So I thought that maybe the Mod Podge on the bottom would help it to adhere better, the paint. So I'm not sure whether that's, my paint didn't have that problem when I did pull my transfer tape up. So I'm not sure if that was the reason or what, but I that's what I did. So I'm just letting you know. I do put three coats of paint on this and I do let it dry thoroughly in between each coat of paint. And then as my last top coat, I use this satin Mod Podge here and I just put this all over the top of it to seal in the paint. And then I actually did let this dry overnight because I really did not want any of the paint to come up. All right, so what I do is a trick that if your mat for your cutting machine ever loses its stick, I just put a little bit of painter's tape on the corners of my paper and I have not had any problem with them slipping since I started doing this. So that's just a little tip for you there. If you have a cutting machine and use, use it. If you don't have a cutting machine, what you'll wanna do is just find an image online that you can print out and you'll just use a decoupage method to decoupage your design into the middle of the um, piece of pan that I'm using. So I'm just going to weed my design out. I'll put a link to this design. I got it off Etsy and I absolutely loved the simplicity of it. I love to add a little bit of pop of orange into my fall decor because I really just love how the orange color pops. But I'm kind of loving having just a few pops of orange and then some neutrals with it. And I think this sign does a perfect job with that. So I'm just going to show you here that as I weed this, that sometimes the image is too big to weed, that I just cut it off in sections as I pull it up. And that's something that's totally fine to do. Um, it makes it a little bit easier to work with because the worst thing is when your little portion that you're working with sticks back down and then starts to pull up the letters or something. So just know that that's, if you, if you already know that hack and you do that, that's great. If you don't, then that is something that is so much easier to cut it off in little sections like that. After you get the main portion of your decal off of there, you have to go back in and weed out all of the letters. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I will get some transfer tape and I will take it to put onto my pizza pan. So I do my best to center this. Um, transfer tape and me sometimes have a love hate relationship. Sometimes I absolutely love it. And then the next time I go to use it, like it, it sticks and it's not the best. It actually worked out very well for me today. So I just place this down and then I do measure it with my ruler to make sure that I'm getting it as centers as possible. If you know me at all or you've watched me, you know that I am not a measurer. So this is very rare that I pull my ruler out and do check, but I did want to get this as centered as possible. Once I am certain with where I want it, I do just use my little uh, hotel key to scrape because I can't find my Cricut scraper anywhere. And then I just peel back the transfer tape, leaving the design on there. And if you have a little spot or something that wants to come up with you, you just kind of go hold it down and peel it back and it works just fine. But I love this design. I think this is going to be so cute and I don't know whether I'm going to put this in my china hutch or put it in my living room or somewhere. I just think this turned out so cute and it was so easy. Hiding in my stash, I found this Easter tag sign from Dollar Tree. I'm just going to take my emery board and file off as much glitter as I can. I then will take some of this brown craft paper and I will cut it to size. And then in order to make this fit the best that I can, I'm just going to lay it on my sign and I will run my finger over the edge of the sign to indent that shape of the sign into the paper. So when I go cut it with my scissors, I can get the closest shape that I can. To adhere this to the sign, I'm going to use just some trusty old glue stick and some hot glue. I'm gonna do this for a couple of reasons. First and foremost is there is a lot of glitter that is on this sign and this will contain any that is left. 
We all know how much Dollar Tree loves their glitter. I swear they must own stock in a glitter company or something because they use a lot of glitter. So it will contain that. And the next is it's just obviously going to cover the design that is there up. It takes less paint and it is going to make it look a little bit more high end, kind of take it to the next level. So I just put my hot glue around the edge. And then once I place that craft paper down, I use my Mod Podge roller to flatten that out a little bit. Um, and that just really helps adhere that. Then I'll just take my emery board and in a downward motion, I will just file off the ed edges of that craft paper and that's going to give it that very crisp look. On the top and the bottom of the sign, I am going to put this cute little pumpkin craft paper that I did get from Hobby Lobby. And I'll just, I'm using my ruler to get as straight of line as I can. And then to keep that straight line, I will just use the edge of the paper you can kind of see how I'm doing that there. And then the same thing, I will just rub my finger over the edge of the sign to indent that and I will go in with my scissors and cut it as close as I can. And then same thing on this paper to get that crisp edge. I just use my emery board. You can use a finger sander, sandpaper, anything that you like that works and just do it in a downward motion softly. And that will just give you that crisp, clean edge. And then I will do the same thing on the bottom of this to add that same craft paper. So again, I just line my little paint stir stick there up on the edge of my tag sign and then kind of eyeball where I want my paper to go up to. And then I will use the other straight edge of this paper to use as my top line. That will give it that crisp, clean, straight edge on the top there. You can see how I do that. And then of course, the same motions here, put your finger or two and dent the sign. And then actually, I guess this one, I don't really need to do that because you can just cut it since it's straight as close to the edge. And then you'll just sand off the edges of the paper like this. So I did use my Cricut cutting machine. You can use any type of rub on transfers or stickers. If you are at all familiar with my channel, you know that I absolutely cannot freehand things. No matter how hard I try, it is very frustrating to me. And as much as I would love to perfect that, I just don't have the patience to do it. So I did use this little design that was in Cricut Design Space to cut these words out. So, and if you guys have been here for a little while, you know that I have lost my Cricut scraping tool and I found it. So I'm so excited that that is back in my life and I can stop using my hotel key momentarily until I lose it again, I'm sure. So I'm just going to push this down onto my sign here farm fresh pumpkin patch. I just love the font that was on that. And then it also had this little you pick sign that I'm going to put down there on the bottom. And as you can see in the upper left hand corner, I have this darling little truck that I got from Hobby Lobby. I think it was like $2.99. And then of course they're 40% off. I'm just going to glue this on there. It will give it that cute little three dimensional look. And I'm just using hot glue for this. And I thought this was the perfect way to use this little truck. It would also be super cute on like a tiered tray or something, but I just love this little sign that I'm making. And I'm just using my little weeding tool. You could use whatever to stick through where that hole is up at the top of your tag sign, because I'm going to use some rope to stick through here so that way we can hang our tag. So any kind of twine or string or whatever you have that you want to use to do this with will work. I just unraveled some Dollar Tree rope and tied a knot into the end of one of the little strands and then I just stuck it through as you saw there. And then on the knot portion, I just put a little bit of hot glue under that. That's going to make that knot so it doesn't slip up at all. You never see it and it'll stay secure. And then just do some Mod Podge. You probably maybe want to do that before you glue your truck on, but I kind of forgot. But what do you guys think of this? I'm just smitten with this. I think it's absolutely darling. I have these three pumpkins that came from Dollar Tree and these two pumpkins have these little burlap, like printed burlap things on the front of them. So I am just going to take those off to complete my project here. And to cover up the space where I took that off, I am just going to kind of run my finger around some craft paper to get a template. And I'm going to cut that out. And then I just use some glue stick and some hot glue to kind of cover that up to make it look a little bit more nice, a little bit more high end. 
For this bigger pumpkin, I'm going to use this in the middle of these three pumpkins. So I am painting it just a white color uh, I believe it's just plaster from Waverly, but any color that you want to do your pumpkins in to match your decor. Most of my DIYs this fall have been the Moss Waverly chalk paint color, the Pumpkin Waverly chalk paint color, and then plaster in Waverly chalk paint. So I am, when I get to the top of this, I realize that it has this little hole in there, like where a little twine string went. So I do use just some spackle to put in there to kind of cover that up, let that dry and sand it off, paint it over to kind of make it look like it's all one one piece and that that's not even there. So using those paint colors that I mentioned there, I'm going to paint one pumpkin with the moss color and then I will paint the other pumpkin with the pumpkin color. I then go back in and I will do my stems. I will do green stems on my orange and white pumpkin and a brown stem on my green pumpkin. Apparently before I paint my stems, I'm gonna go in and I do want these little raised areas on this center pumpkin to show up and have a lot of depth and dimension. And so I do go in with that antiquing wax on just a little teeny brush and I go around the edges of all of these little raised areas. So that way it kind of defines them a little bit more. So from far away, you can see that they're there. Uh, you wouldn't have to do this. It's just, uh, it makes them pop a little bit more. I also go around the whole edge of the pumpkin to do that on all of the edges. All right, here's where I go in and paint the stem of my pumpkin. So again, I do two green stems and then I'll you'll see me in a minute do a brown stem on my green pumpkin. So I do go around the edge of these with a little bit of antiquing wax. I just really like the definition that this provides. This is completely optional. I just like the way that it looks. You could even go in and do a little bit more definition on the pumpkin, give it kind of its round ridges. I, I don't really know what those little bumps on the pumpkins are called. If, if you know, let me know. But uh, I am putting some words on these. So I'm just leaving them more blank in the center so those words pop. Hobby Lobby has these wooden words in their fall section this year. They say grateful, thankful, and blessed. You get like three of each, I believe, two or three of each in the package. And they um, are just a couple of dollars. It's a really good deal, I feel. And I've used them a lot, so I really have gotten my money's worth out of them. But I do cover these up with the white chalk paint. You could do them in any color that you want. A stained wood would look good. I just wanted that white to pop really well off of the orange and the green and have it tie into that middle pumpkin. I am just using some Gorilla Super Glue here, and I will just place those letters down. I don't measure things a lot, so if you want to measure them to get them a little bit more centered or straight, definitely do that. I'm kind of more of a eyeball it type of gal. So again, I just kind of glue these, stick them into as close to center as I get them and call it good. On my cutting machine, I cut out an ampersand. I do know they sell different styles of wood cutout ampersands at Walmart for I think like $1.97 or something. So that would be an alternative that you could do. You could even freehand one on there or print one out and cut it, decoupage it on there. A lot of different uh, ways that you can do that to kind of make it if you don't have a cutting machine. I'm going over it with a little bit of the plaster chalk paint to dull down the glossiness of the vinyl because I don't think the glossiness really is all I had and it didn't really um, fit with the whole project so that's why I did that and then I'm just going to glue the center pumpkin to the other two so these other two pumpkins have that little stand on the bottom of them so that will act as the stand that will hold the whole sign up and you can just see I'm just kind of eyeballing it there getting it to look good guys look at how cute this looks I'm so excited for this one so I'm taking some raffia that I have and I'm just tying two little raffia bows. And I'm just kind of cutting them down and sizing them as best I can to make sure that they kind of match the size of the pumpkins to how I want it to look.
This is probably my most favorite project I've created all season. I love how this turned out and really it was like less than $4. What do you guys think of this one? Most excited for you guys to see this one today. So you can see that I have drawn a triangle on a couple pieces of scrap wood that I have. I do three of them and cut them out with my table saw. And then I sand the edges to make them have a little bit of a rounded look to them and make the wood a lot more smooth. I am then taking, I believe this is a hazelnut color of the chalk paint and I just water it down. This makes it just more of a stain to go on the wood. I want this to look like pie crust. We are going to make a slice of pumpkin pie out of these blocks of wood. They're kind of like triangle blocks, I guess. But I do take some paint, pumpkin Waverly chalk paint and I do add a little bit of the antiquing wax to it just to kind of give it a little bit of a darker tone so it's not so bright. And I do cover the next two triangles completely, all sides, front and back. I do take these little half beads, I have five of them, and I do just wipe the what's left over of that hazelnut um, kind of stain that I've made out of the hazelnut chalk paint there, and I do wipe down each of those. I do glue each of my layers together here, so I just use wood glue and then a little bit of hot glue, and then I my first layer goes on really well. So I lay that on, and then I do lay it on my table to push it down, make sure it's all level on that front layer that everybody's gonna see. On this next layer, it kind of doesn't adhere as well in the beginning. It kind of, um, I don't know if there's just some uneven spots or what it was, but when I go to push this down, it doesn't want to kind of push towards the other one, if that makes sense. You kind of can see there's a little bit of a gap there. So I do get out my wood clamps there and clamp it together. And then I do just take these little half beads and glue them on for a little bit of pie crust embellishment here. I just start with the middle one. I just use wood glue and kind of work my way out on those. I have this little burlap flower from the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, so I'm just gonna glue that on, and as I do, I totally drop it. <laughs> and it actually ends up being like a happy little accident because it kind of took off a little bit of the glue so it was able to go on and it did not like bunch all around or come seeping out or anything like that. I take just a little bit of burlap ribbon and kind of uh, fold it over here, kind of roughly, if you will. I'm not really sure what technique you would call this, but I do just glue it onto the back. This just kind of helps give it a little bit of that pie crust look on the back. That little flower acts as the whipped cream on there. I just think this turned out so cute. I'm loving how this is coming along so far. This part would be completely optional, but I did use my Cricut and cut out the words fresh pumpkin pie. And I did just put that on each of the little layers there. I thought that that kind of turned out so cute. Kind of a little take on the little books or crates that you see. I think this turned out so cute. I absolutely love this. this is one of my most favorite pieces I've made. I got these at Hobby Lobby. I got this cute little white pumpkin. They had lots of different colors. And this is in the bridal section over kind of by the bridal section. They have these little succulent bouquets and then little sprigs over there. So I just waited until those were 50% off to do this. So I'm just going to remove the stem on this pumpkin. They are styrofoam under whatever painted surface this is on them. So I just removed the stem and now I'm just unwrapping this little succulent bouquet and I'm just going to unwind it and get all of the little sprigs separate. 
So it's kind of nice because when you get it 50% off for $6, you get all, like it's all together. You don't have to buy a bunch of little sets of uh, different succulents. It comes all together. It's all matched, I guess is what I'm saying. So I did take my scissors and kind of pop off a little bit of that coating that's on the pumpkin to get down to expose the styrofoam. And then I literally just kind of started playing around, sticking in different succulents. If I needed to trim them down, I used my wire cutters to trim them down. And then I'm just going to keep placing them in and keep going around. Now, when I do get to the little long um, fern-like leaves like this here that I have, I realized they were very long for what I wanted to do. So I do trim off a couple inches off of the end and then those little leaves just pull right off. And so you can kind of see, I'm like, that's really long. So you'll see what I'm talking about here. I just trim those with my wire cutters and those leaves just pull right off to give you another little stem to stick down into your styrofoam. I am just going to let this play so you can watch my thought process with arranging these sprigs of flowers and greenery here. I am not at all like trained in this area at all. I just kind of go for what feels good and what looks right. And so there's really no right or wrong way. That's why I like the simplicity of picking up the little bouquet is because they're already kind of matched together. So I'll just let you watch kind of how this goes and hopefully that will help inspire you. So as you can see, I'm having a little bit of trouble with my eucalyptus leaves here. So to fix that, I just put a little hot glue on one of the leaves to attach it. That way it just kind of fills in that negative space that I did not want there. And I did pick up a couple little extra uh, sprigs of the succulents I showed at the beginning of the video in the wedding section to kind of make this a little bit fuller. So you can see how that looks. I just stick the stem back in there. That would be totally optional, but I absolutely love how this turned out. I think it looks so chic and so cute. I think you're gonna really like how this DIY turns out. I have this cute little house that I got at Hobby Lobby, but I've seen them at Dollar Tree. And then I've also got this little ironing board that I got at Dollar Tree also. So what I'm going to do is make a mark on the top of this ironing board. You'll have to see if you can guess what I'm going to make out of this. And I'm just going to cut this off. So you can use an X-Acto knife, a box cutter, and do it that way. I just happen to have my saw right there, so that's what I used. And I am going to round out the edges on the bottom so they're not quite so square. And I'm just making sure that this uh, kind of fits the size with my house of how I want. So however big you want to make this, you'll measure do it according to your measurements so i tape off a couple of stripes because i'm making a candy corn out of the ironing board and of course the top is going to be white the middle will be orange and the bottom will be yellow so i'm just using waverly's chalk paint in the pumpkin and i believe maize is the color of the yellow so you can use whatever kind of acrylic paint or chalk paint you would like the yellow on this is not very bright and the orange is a little bit more muted than a traditional candy corn but it does match the decor that I've made this year so I'm okay with that. So I'm just going to remove my tape here and see how my lines came out. 
I think I did a pretty good job on getting those crisp, clear lines right there. So now I want to make some beads that are candy corn color. So I just take some wooden beads and I do six beads total, two of each color of the white, the orange, and the yellow. Now, however you want to handle this next part is completely optional, but I'm going to be using some scrapbook paper because I have a little bit of a hole in the middle of my house there. I got this on a very good sale at Hobby Lobby because of that, but I don't have a piece of paper big enough, so I'm just using a couple of pieces and just matching up the seam there where the plaid is. My candy cord will cover the majority of this, so it's not super crucial to be so exact, but I do want the plaid to line up for the rest of the house. So now I'm just taking some scissors and cutting off the excess and then I will just use my nail file, whatever you use, a sanding block, finger sander, you'll use that around the edge to make that a, a crisp, clean edge. And now I'm just taking some twine, I wrap it around like three times and I'll just tie that off right here. And then I am going to thread on my beads in candy corn order. So I do the white on top and then I do the orange and then the yellow. And I kind of offset these so my next strand of beads will be hang just a little bit lower than the first strand. But I'll let you watch how I do that and how that looks. I take a little bit of twine and wrap it around my hand and then tie it off in the middle to make a cute little twine bow here to put at the top of my little hanging bead strands. And of course, you know me, I have to just stress something, if not everything in my video. So I do sand the candy corn to kind of soften the edges, give it a little bit of a rustic look. I go around all of the edges and then I also go in the middle there and kind of go over the yellow, the orange and the white just to give it a really rustic look. I want to make sure that I match up the bottom of the candy corn with the house so it will stand really well. So at once I get my um, position figured out and where I want that candy corn to do, I just kind of lift it up and glue underneath. I noticed I had a little bit of painter's tape on the back there. I do end up removing that. So just be aware of that. Now I have these little Halloween figures that I have had for years. Some of these like my mom gave me that were from my childhood even. So I'm just kind of playing around because I really like the way each of these look. Here's what it looks like plain. And then I've got my cute little witch I could set in front of it, my little pumpkin. So whatever you have that you wanna add, if you wanna add a little more detail, you can. I personally like the look of the black cat there. So that's what I am displaying in front of mine. Which would you use on yours? This DIY is kind of like a two for DIY. So I had, I wanted to kind of make a little collection here and I'm trying to still perfect my decoupage technique. So I have this little charger that was from the fall section at Hobby Lobby and these napkins are so stinking cute. They came from Dollar Tree and I am trying, what I'm gonna to try to do is decoupage, cut the napkin out onto the charger here to add a decorative plate to my china hutch. So I have a china hutch in my kitchen. I like to put fun little unique plates and stuff in for the different holidays. So this of course will not be food safe. So just, I wanna mention that. So that way we get that out of the way. But there's a couple layers of the napkins. So I'm just tearing this away and it becomes a very, very thin layer that's left here. So you're just delicate. I mean, it doesn't look like I'm being super delicate, but you do want to make sure that you don't tear it. And then for this particular one where the background is not the same color as the napkin, it's that galvanized metal. I want to cut as close to the design as I can. So this is a little bit, um, it takes a little bit of time because you really want to be as careful as you can. Now I wasn't, I mean, this was so thin that some of the leaves and little things, I mean, I did my best to get in between, but I was not super picky um, because I knew once I decoupaged it that a lot of that uh, white color would kind of blend into the galvanized. You'll see how it looks when I'm done. But you do want to kind of take your time and get as much of that uh, excess around the edge as you can.
I put some Mod Podge down in the center of the charger here and then I'm just taking a brush and I will just spread this all around the center. I don't go up onto the edge of the charger or anything. I did wanna make sure that I used a brush for this just because I didn't trust myself with one of the foam sponge brushes. I felt like I wanted to be so delicate with the edges and I don't know, for some reason, it just didn't seem like I could be as delicate with a foam brush as I could with an actual brush. So after I spread the decoupage, not decoupage, we're, that's the process we're doing is decoupaging. <laughs> after I spread the Mod Podge out, I just lay down that little cute decal. So I did use my Mod Podge roller here and I did quickly realize that like, I didn't wanna do that with this snappy end because it was not as delicate as I really needed to be. I did not wanna tear it or anything. And so I just went ahead with my brush and I just kind of go around the edges and make sure that all of the edges are secured down with the Mod Podge. And then I take some Mod Podge and put in the center of my design there and I just go all the way over making sure that all of it is completely covered. This will just make sure that that design is adhered very well. And you can see how that little bit of um, like between the leaves there, the little white from the napkin that obviously I couldn't cut in between all of those leaves, it does blend in extremely well to the galvanized. So this right here is just a platter that I had from Dollar Tree and some paper placemats that I got from Hobby Lobby. So what I'm gonna do first is just spray paint my platter from Dollar Tree and I'm just using some spray chalk paint. Do it in whatever color you would like. This is also going to go in my China Hutch. It's just kind of a fun fall uh, decorative platter. Again, not food safe, but definitely fun to put out to decorate with. You could easily put like some napkins or some of your silverware or something on it. So I'm going to trace around the base onto my paper napkin to get the general shape. And then I'll just cut that out with my scissors. After you make sure that your little decal fits the exact way that you want it, you're just gonna put some Mod Podge in here. So I just kind of put a bunch on there and go all the way around. This one I was fine using my foam brush with because it was not as delicate as that napkin. Um, and then I do put a little bit of the Mod Podge on the back of the decal, the little paper placemat. And then you're just going to very carefully eyeball it and get it kind of, you do have a little bit of wiggle room with the Mod Podge. And I do get out my roller to kind of get out any bubbles or anything. And you'll see here that I end up lifting it up and then using that roller to go down. This worked extremely well for getting out the bubbles on that. So if you have one of the rollers, then try this method. I highly recommend one of these rollers. And again, I'll just link that down in my description box. So if you guys want to have a look at those, I absolutely love it. They do sell them at Hobby Lobby though. I've seen them there also. So I'm deciding that I want this particular uh, platter to have the same texture all over since, you know, if you were to buy it as like an actual platter that had a design on it, it would all have that glossy look. So I do go all the way over completely with Mod Podge and my intent was to leave it like this. And so that's why I'm doing this step here. And then I actually decided, it, well, I guess right here, what you're seeing me do is I decided to kind of antique the edges a little bit. Sometimes on um, a couple of plates that I have, it looks like they've kind of um, given it that farmhouse kind of style. So I thought that would kind of blend the white paint into the cream color on the napkin, not napkin, <laughs> the paper placemat. Thank you. Okay. Anyway, and so I just kind of rub that antiquing wax in and then I, um, into the edges and then I rub it off with a baby wipe. And then I'm just taking some of my plaster chalk paint and just kind of pushing that back in to kind of make it a little bit, that white pop through a little bit more. And then I go through and completely coat it with my clear coat spray paint. So I felt like that gave it the best shine to make it look completely like a platter that you actually bought, not like a paper placemat and a Dollar Tree platter. But let me know what you think of these. I love them. I think they're gonna be so cute in my China Hutch for fall time. I'm excited to have these in there. What do you guys think of these? Do you guys like decoupaging or not so much? 
Have you seen these pumpkins at Dollar Tree? They're so cute and they have the little metal letters on them, but you can see when you take them off, they've kind of put a little bit of shadowing on there. So I don't want that because I'm going to change the words that I want on my pumpkin. So I'm just painting it with some pumpkin chalk paint and then I'm gonna put a little bit of definition in here with my antiquing wax. You can see I just kind of put a little bit on the edge of my sponge brush and kind of just copy that curvature and then I'm going around the edge of the pumpkin here and then to dull that down a little bit so it's not so harsh, I do go back over it with a little bit of the pumpkin chalk paint. And then I'm just painting my stem in the moss color with chalk paint here. What I'm doing with this project is I'm going to use it in a wreath. So I am using some of this six foot garland and then some picks that I found at Hobby Lobby. Now my pumpkin is going to sit off to the side on my wreath form that I got from Dollar Tree there. And so my garland only needs to go around like three fourths of the um, form, if that makes sense. So I'll kind of show you here that I set it to the point where my pumpkin would stop. And I, this is a six foot garland, like I said, and so it will double up. So as it gets around to the next pot, I will take the other half of it and curve it back around. And so this is what's going to give a very thick look to your wreath. Now, I was looking at wreaths at Hobby Lobby the other day and like wreaths that were this full were upwards of like $150. Now, granted, they have their 40% off on fall, but still, that's a lot of money. I don't want to spend that much on a wreath that I'm going to use for a month, maybe two months. So I'm just zip tying this on. Um, I do the top portion of the garland all the way around. I zip tie it where there's a little break in the wreath form that I can go around. And then I do that second layer, the same thing. Just go around zip tying it so it's not going everywhere. I got these zip ties at Dollar Tree. So you get, and they're in the automotive section. So if you're looking for zip ties, they're, um, there, it's a little package that comes with black and red ones. So I just use all the black ones. So you can see how my pumpkin will fit in there. I'm just checking to make sure how good that looks. And then what I do is stick my, before I zip tie any of these in, I stick them all in and make sure that they're placed where I want them to be and the spacing's all correct. So I have six picks that have like berries or pumpkins on them, so like three of each. And then I believe I have three or four of the hydrangeas and I just kind of go in between and just make a little pattern. Now these little hydrangeas, I just wrap that wire stem around to hook those in because those are not going anywhere. And I did not show me zip tying the other things in because my head was in the way completely as I was filming. So I thought you'd enjoy looking at the wreath, not my head. But I just zip tied all of those in to wherever there was a wire next to them, the little picks. And then you can see I'm just bending the pick part here in or wrapping it around a wire if I can to give it some extra stability. Look at how full this looks. I think this is so pretty. And I just go back in and cut all the backs off of the zip ties here. And now on my cutting machine, I did cut out Hello Pumpkin. And I do use a little bit of painter's tape if your mat loses some stickiness. Somebody told me a baby wipe might work too. So you could go ahead and put the words back on. That looks so cute if you don't have a cutting machine or you don't wanna take the time to do this. I just really, since it's my front door wreath, I wanted it to say hello on it. So I thought hello pumpkin would be really cute to do. So I'm just going to weed this out and I want it to kind of look galvanized because I did like the look of the galvanized words. So I kind of lightly tap over with a stencil brush with silver lining and elephant were the two colors of chalk paint that I kind of go back and forth. And I just want to let you know that from my front door when I'm standing there in person, it totally looks galvanized. Um, like you would have to get right up next to it. It doesn't come across on camera as well as I had hoped. But I kind of, after I got all of this done right here, I was like, how is this is all gonna stick to the transfer tape and it's going to get all over my pumpkin. Like I started to panic a little bit. It doesn't, it didn't. Like I did use a little bit of a Q-tip and a baby wipe to kind of go in and clean up the um, negative space there. So that way when I put my transfer tape down, it didn't pick all of that paint up. Um, so I did that as best as I could and kind of thought, well, we'll hope for the best. It totally worked out just fine.
One trick that I did with this is I placed my transfer tape on my table so I knew that it wasn't going anywhere and then I just used my fingers down below to move my pumpkin around to center it. So if that makes sense, hopefully, but that's kind of a way to help get things centered. And I, again, just eyeballed it as best I could and I just think, look at how good that looks. And like I say, on camera, it doesn't look so much like galvanized metal, but in person, guys, like it really does. Like it looks so good. So I do just go in here and I have a crocodile that I cut a couple of holes in the top and bottom to zip tie this on. You would not have to do that. You could easily uh, hot glue this in. You could easily um, like use, like punch a hole in it with like a nail and a hammer or something to zip tie down at the bottom or something like that. Um, there's a lot of different ways to get that affixed to it. And then I take just a couple little loose leaves to kind of cover those zip ties. So that way you're not gonna see them. It's not going to come off of there. And then you can kind of see up on the right hand side of the top of my pumpkin, it was a little bare. So I'm just going to come and glue. And I just honestly turned my wreath over and picked a couple of leaves from the back to do this with. So stinking cute. I love this wreath. Guys, this easily would have been over $100 at Hobby Lobby, the way that their wreaths were priced. And I, I mean, I probably spent a little bit, probably less than 30 on it. And it's homemade. It's going to last me years and years. I love this. You can go over with decoupage on your pumpkin to seal it, but what do you think of this one? I love it. At Hobby Lobby, they have these really cute wooden chargers. They're $12.99 a piece, and they do have 40% off of them for fall, but I thought I could recreate them for much less and very simple. And of course, these are not going to be food safe, just like the wooden ones they had are not food safe but I'm gonna show you a really easy way to recreate these. So I have these little chargers or got these chargers from Hobby Lobby and they usually have some type of white charger that are around the $2 range. I also got these wooden letters in their fall section that say blessed, grateful, and thankful. And then they also had this package of words that said blessed and thankful that are with more of their Thanksgiving stuff for your Thanksgiving table. So I like both of these different words and so I'm going to kind of see which one I like the best. So I'm going to stain this one that says blessed in the neutral wood, and you could easily leave it neutral if you wanted to. You can make this as simple as you want or as customized as you want. Here is what this blessed looks like on there. I really do like the color of that blessed probably the best but I like the size of these words on here. So I decide to go with these and they do kind of have a coppery tone to them, which would be perfect for fall and perfect, you know, to kind of bring that fall color in. Now I'm just showing you there, you could use Gorilla Glue to give these a permanent hold. You can also use hot glue, which is what I did. That way you could maybe change them up for different seasons if you wanted to. Uh, and so I do just run the hot glue on there and push that down really well to make sure that it gets a good grip. And then I do the same thing with this thankful. You can see I just kind of quickly go along all of the words there and then just hurry and place it down before the glue dries. That way you can kind of make sure that it sticks really well. And I do take my little uh, weeding tool from my Cricut stuff and I just kind of use that to kind of get the hot glue that might have seeped out to kind of give it a really crisp look. So for not that much time and just a little bit of hot glue, I think these turned out so cute, so fun for a china hutch or to put on a plate rack. I love how these turned out. One of the fun things of being a creator and a crafter is a lot of times you'll just be at the craft store or a boutique store or somewhere and you'll see really cute things and you'll think, hey, I think I can probably make that. <laughs> so I saw these cute pumpkins at Hobby Lobby and thought, I can probably make something similar. So I did just buy the largest size dowel that they had at Hobby Lobby. Make sure that you get it when it's on sale. That way it was only a couple of dollars. And I measured them down and I cut, these are six inches that I cut this first set as. And I paint this set completely orange. I cut four of them because I'm going to glue them together to make one pumpkin. And then my next set, I believe I cut, these are three inches that I cut 
and so I paint these a green color. These are just kind of the colors that I'm going with for fall this year. And this is all Waverly chalk paint that I'm using. I absolutely love the Waverly chalk paint. And I do just use a little bit of wood glue and then just a teeny bit of hot glue that just gives it that little bit of a temporary hold so that way you can kind of make sure that it really does adhere. So I'm going to glue the four orange ones together and then I'll go back in and glue the green ones together also. After I did those two, I decided I needed one more, but I did not have any more of that size of dowel. So I did take just a plunger handle and I cut these down to be right in between these two sizes, which I think ended up being about uh, four, four and a half inches. And then just the same process, I painted them with white and I glued them together, everything like that. And then we're on to making a stem for these. For the stem, I just use some scrap pieces of dowel wood. You could even use like the handles off of some of the foam brushes that you've used would work. Even like a stick from your yard would work fine. Just anything that looks like a stem and you're just going to cover it uh, in a brown or green or whatever color of paint you'd like to use. The next thing that I do is I go in and on all of the edges on these little pumpkins, I take the antiquing wax and I just kind of go over them to kind of make them pop, make it look like the little ridges that you see in a pumpkin. It kind of makes all those edges show. So I just really kind of go in and distress these really good. So then I just take the hot glue and I just glue each of the little stems onto the pumpkin. I did a green stem on my white pumpkin and my orange pumpkin and then a brown stem on my green pumpkin. So I kind of like the way that looked. And then I do decide they need a little something extra so you can see there that I just go ahead and tie a couple raffia bows to put on them. Look at how cute these look. I think they turned out so cute and so fun. Now the ones I saw at Hobby Lobby only came in orange, so I'm so excited that I got to make my own and kind of have them in the colors that I want. This is such a fun and simple project. So I am just taking this cute little pumpkin that I bought at Hobby Lobby. It is part of their fall line, which is currently on sale at the 40% off. So you can take advantage of that. I am taking just some scrapbook paper in a burlap print, so you can obviously customize this to anything that you would like. And I do cut that out, but I do cut the stem part off of the scrapbook paper because I want the stem part of the pumpkin itself to be what shows through. And then I am just using my regular glue stick and I will cover the pumpkin completely and I do go over the paper as well to make sure that it is covered all over. I do take my Mod Podge roller and I do go over it even though I did use my glue stick I still feel that this helps create a really good bond between the paper and the pumpkin itself and so I do smooth it out with that and then I do take my emery board you can use a sanding block finger sander sandpaper anything that you've got and in a downward motion go ahead and make sure that you just get all of the edges of the paper off it gives it a nice clean look. I do paint the stem with some green chalk paint there so that way you've got your cute little burlap pumpkin and the little green stem showing through. Now it's time to embellish this pumpkin. So I take a stem of flowers that I bought at Dollar Tree and I'm going to just use my wire cutters to cut each individual stem off and I just kind of play around with the different leaves and the different twigs here and the um, 
pine cone and the sunflower everything to kind of get a good placement of how I want this and then I just use my hot glue to stick it all down so I'll kind of just let you watch me play around with this here and see how I do this One trick that I have learned is I have purchased a couple of plungers from Dollar Tree and I cut little teeny pieces of that off so I can use as stands on the back of my project. I never can find the Jenga blocks at my Dollar Tree so this is kind of what I use in place of that. So whatever you have to make a little stand on the back to help it stand up completely. And then I do just take some antiquing wax on a brush. This is completely optional, but you know I have to distress things. So as a farmhouse girl, that's kind of my jam. So I just go all the way around the edges and look at how cute this looks. I think this is so fun. I absolutely love this one. This DIY ends up being so cute in the end. I absolutely love it. And you can create it with all items from Dollar Tree. I am taking this little shadow box and I am removing the three-dimensional portion of it. Then I'm going to take some black paint and just completely paint the frame. You of course can leave the frame or paint it, do whatever colors you would like, but I'm going to be placing some scrapbook paper over the back portion of this shadow box so I don't need to tape anything off. I can just go ahead and paint all around like such. And then I take this little pumpkin here. Now this came from Hobby Lobby, but they did have tons of different little wooden pumpkins at Dollar Tree. So I paint my pumpkin orange and I'm going to paint this little block, which was a leftover piece from another DIY I did from a block from Dollar Tree. I'm just cutting down some scrapbook paper to size. I thought this little black and white buffalo check would be so cute for a contrast. And then I'm just using some purple school glue stick, which if you've been here for a minute, you know I absolutely love this stuff. And guys, I recently found my Cricut scraper, so I'm just using that to get all of the bubbles and things out. I'm just gonna touch up my pumpkin, give it a little green stem there, and then I used my Cricut to cut out a jack-o'-lantern face. You could easily use a Sharpie to do this, but of course, I don't freehand anything because I, I just do not have a talent for it. <laughs> So I also cut out Happy Halloween and I'm just going to take each of these and I'm going to glue them into the shadow box. And so this first block here that I'm gluing down, I don't need uh, to raise it up any because it is, and whoops, I almost glued it upside down, <laughs> but it is very thick and so it pops out well. But the little jack-o'-lantern is so thin, I'm just using a little teeny wooden block and I use that to raise it up to give it that three-dimensional look. I think the colors of this turned out so cute and I love that buffalo check paper in there. I feel like this is such a nice little addition for Halloween. It's not screaming like scary or gory or anything. It's just cute and sweet and totally my style. What do you guys think of this one? So this is kind of a decorating hack as well as a DIY. And by DIY, I mean that in the simplest of forms. Hobby Lobby has these darling little wreaths. They have them for all different seasons. I've seen them also like at Walmart, Michaels, Joann's, Dollar Tree once upon a time, but I haven't seen them there for years. I also found these cute little cutting or charcuterie boards at Hobby Lobby. I found this little sign blank there as well. So I picked that up and I loved the buffalo check design on this. If you don't have a cutting board or you want to have a patterned one like that buffalo checked one, I will leave a link to a video down in my description box where I did um, decoupage some craft paper onto a cutting board from Ikea that turned out super cute. But all you're going to do is just take one of these wreaths and you're going to wrap the jute twine, kind of bend the jute twine in half, and then wrap the little loop around and pull the tails through. You can kind of watch what I do here. And then you're going to just use this as a decoration on the cutting board. 
So at first on this circular one, I was going to tie it around the neck and then realized with that fun little handle on there that I would wrap it through. And I love how this looks. So it's just me wrapping this around the top and then I do tie it off and I use a little dot of hot glue to hold this on because I want to be able to change the wreath out as the seasons go, or maybe not even have a wreath if I decide at some point that it's too much or I want a more simplistic look. On this cute little charcuterie board that has the buffalo check, I love the orange with this black and white here. I just think that totally screams fall and even a little bit of Halloween if you're not one to decorate with necessarily Halloween decorations, but like to have the color scheme, it's perfect. So this just shows you up close how I get this on here. It's so easy. You just loop that through and you pull the tails through. And that just makes it so you don't have to really untie anything. You can just kind of pull that loose when you're ready to change this out. And this will be so fun. I will definitely change this one out because I have Buffalo check for my winter decoration. So I will be able to put a Christmas wreath or tag or something on here. And then of course you just take it around the neck and you just tie it in just a knot. And it, I mean, how much simpler can you get than that? But I love the way it looks. And it is so stylish right now with the different cutting boards and charcuterie boards to have them layered and stacked like in your hutch or on your, uh, against your backsplash in your kitchen. And how fun would that be on one of them to have a darling wreath? Now, I don't expect you to be tying a wreath to like all of your cutting boards, you know, just kind of do it a little bit sparingly. But this just shows you the different looks and the different ideas to hopefully inspire you. Now, if you don't have a cutting board and you don't have a way to get one or you happen to have a sign blank at home, this is another way to get it on. You're going to use one of these little command hooks. I didn't even have any more of the backings that go on them, so I just use a little bit of hot glue to hot glue it onto the sign. So I kind of place my wreath and get an idea of where, uh, how low I want the little hook to go. And then I just add a little bit of hot glue to get that to adhere. So simple, so easy. Now the main part of the wreath is a little too thick to fit in the command hook. So you're just gonna find one of the little vines that's there and kind of pull it up to be able to hook over that. And then these are all have wire in them, the branches. So you're easily able to kind of mold them and cover that up so you can't see that. You can kind of strategically place a leaf if you need to or something. But this, I mean, you could take the ties off of this and use this anywhere you could hang it. Um, but just to add a little bit of fall that is so easy and something that looks a little bit custom, not just a plain wreath, but dress it up a little bit with something if that makes sense. I just think this looks so fun and not only so fun, but I just think it's darling. <laughs> Here's all three looks together. Which one of these would you like in your home? I think these are so cute and so simple and literally no skill, guys. Anybody can do this.
If you're enjoying the video this far, I hope you consider subscribing and also remember to hit that like button. For now, let's move on to some more DIYs. For this DIY, there's a couple of different ways that you can make this. So you can make it with uh, this little pumpkin that you see there. If you don't have a pumpkin, I have this little sheet from Dollar Tree uh, to use. And then of course the back is just a wood canvas that I bought at Walmart. Um, six or seven dollars I believe was what it was. I'm just gonna take some scrapbook paper and I loved this color of plaid. I wanted a plaid for sure in the background. So I just had to, since it didn't fit quite, I kind of had to match it up as best I could. So you're just gonna take the back out of this little wood canvas and then I just measure my paper down to make sure that it fit. And then here I am just putting some good old school glue, the little uh, school glue stick, I should say, onto the backing of my little wood canvas. And then I will just use my Mod Podge roller to make sure that this adheres extremely well to that. And this will become the back of our canvas there. So you can see how that looks there. I guess this is kind of like a reverse canvas. So what I'm gonna do is take this little sign from Dollar Tree and remove the center stuff. And then I just cut some scrapbook paper down to size to fit inside of it. Just got some coordinating paper to fit. And you can see that you could use one of those little pumpkins from Hobby Lobby or something. Uh, anything you have would be fine. But what I'm going to do is trace this on the back of this little, this is like a tile, like a plastic tile from Dollar Tree. Um, kind of looks like that like faux tin. And so I'm just going to cut my shape of the pumpkin out. This stuff is like very thin plastic. It cuts extremely easy. And then I cover it with some plaster chalk paint. And then I go in with my metallic silver and I go over all of the raised areas. This is just going to make this look like distressed tin. So here's just an up close look at what this looks like once you've kind of distressed it and added that little silver bit on there. So I'm just making a little mark on my canvas there of where to glue my second sign onto. The plaid lines really help because you have kind of like straight lines to go off of. So I'm just putting some hot glue on the back of this and then measuring that up there. I just love how these two papers look together. I think they are so cute. This is just the original riser that came on that sign. So I glue that down and then I'm just going to glue the pumpkin. I will warn you that this is plastic, so it will start to melt the pumpkin if you push too hard. So maybe super glue might work a little bit better or if you use hot glue, just don't push very firmly on it. And then I take a jumbo uh, popsicle stick here or craft stick and cut it to the same size as the pumpkin. And then I just uh, weather it up with some antiquing wax here. So I just use a baby wipe to wipe that on. And then I'm doing a water slide decal on here. These are so amazing. I recently discovered these. Um, I'll leave some more information about them in my description box if you'd like to know. But it says, meet me at the pumpkin patch. I thought that was so cute. So I just made another little riser out of a part of an old craft stick or paint stick and glued that on. And then I will use that to glue my cute little sign onto the front of the pumpkin. This particular DIY completely blew all of my expectations out of the water. I kind of had a vision for it, and as it came together, I loved it more and more. You'll have to let me know what you guys think of this one. Personally, I think it turned out so classy, and I absolutely love it. When I was at Hobby Lobby looking for some inspiration, I did find these cute little pumpkins that were there. And so I do have an idea that I wanna try with this. So I do take this little bit of embellishment that they have on here, the leaf and this little um, sunflower on here. I do just remove those. I do end up using them again, but, and I do take this little, um, hanging tag off of there. I did not want the blue on there. I have a very specific idea that I want to try. So I do cover this completely in white chalk paint, the front and all of the edges, just to make sure that it has a good coat of the white paint all over. So that way it just looks really good. So then I take this out into my garage and I am going to drill several holes in this. I know this sounds a little bit odd, <laughs> but just bear with me, watch what I do. So I do want to do my holes in pairs. So I need four holes in three different sections on each side. That does not make sense. I know when I say that you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so just watch what I do here. So I'm going to do 
here we go 12 holes on each side if that makes sense here but i'm doing them like one right next to the other This is what your pumpkin will look like once you get all of your holes drilled in. Now you could just leave it that white color. I You could paint it any color you wanted. I chose this paper that had looked like book, um, like pages out of a book. Again, I just trace this. I do cut the pumpkin stem off because I want to have control over the color of the pumpkin stem. And then I am just going to use my trusty old glue stick here and I'm going to glue the scrapbook paper onto the front right over the holes that we just drilled in here and i'm going to use my mod podge roller which again is linked down in my description box and then my emery board to go in a downward motion all around the edges of this to make sure that you have a really clean edge i take a pencil and just poke through each of these holes so i know where the holes are and then you can see what i do with the pencil i can go through and clear those holes out and that gives me that nice clean edge on them. I am going to put some Mod Podge over this to make sure that it stays down. Make sure that through all of like the little holes and all of the edges and everything that they are firmly secure. And I do um, want, it, want it to kind of have a little bit of a glossy sheen. Now I just take some Dollar Tree rope and I unwind it and take one of the strands and this is just like lacing cards guides. Did you ever have those that you used to play with and sit and lace up all the cute little designs that they had on there? So I just put some painter's tape on the end and I'm just going up and down through each of these holes. And you can watch how I go through and get this side completed. I just move right, don't stop or cut it off or anything. I just move right over to the next side and I go in an up and down motion through that side too. Again, I apologize, my camera was being very finicky and I did lose some footage here. I think my storage was full. So I'm just showing you that I did glue a little piece of scrap wood on the back to help it stand up and I did tie the rope off. And then I took that original embellishment that came on it and I just rewired that back on. I mean, it was literally like you put the wire around and twist tie it. I do take a little bit of antiquing wax and go around the edges. You can see I did paint the stem of the pumpkin with a green color there. I just think this was kind of a different take on something. I don't know. I thought it was really cute. I love the little rustic uh, rope going through the holes on there. What do you guys think of this? It's a little bit different, but I actually really like how this turned out. And I'm so excited to combine all of my pumpkins together that I've made. For this DIY, we're going to dress up a wooden garland. Now you can buy wooden garlands at Hobby Lobby. They have them in their fall section. They also have them in their Christmas section where their Christmas tree garland is. You can, um, I've seen that Dollar Tree has started carrying wooden beads now too. I have not seen them in mine. You'd may have to buy several strands though to be able to make a garland. So I'm just showing you how to make your own here. You just take some jute twine and a little bit of tape on the end of it and that way it will stop the jute from fraying when you put it in. So this is the pattern that I decided to do. I did the big one in the middle and then on either side of that I did the next size down and then I did 10 of the smallest beads in between. And I'll put the measurements of the beads and a link to the beads that I used down in my description box. But I did buy these little burlap leaves at Hobby Lobby. They were $5.99 for a package and then 40% off. And you would really only need to use one package. You wouldn't need to do the plain burlap ones. I just had those as well. And so I thought I would add those in. And this is so simple guys. So if you don't make your garland and you just buy one or have one, this will take you just a matter of like a couple of minutes and it is so easy. So these leaves have a little bit of wire on the top of them. And so I just find a neutral, not a neutral, but a, a space that I'm going to 
wrap the wire around just in between the beads so it kind of hooks onto the jute twine and I do it on the same place of my pattern. So if you don't have a pattern of like larger and smaller beads to follow, you're just gonna count in between and like every 10th bead or every fifth bead, whatever your desired length is, you'll count that many beads and then place a leaf. So it is so simple, but honestly, this makes such an impact. So if you have like a mantle, I happen to have my beaded garland hanging over a big mirror in my family room. Uh, it So when I put these leaves on there, it really does just add a really big pop of fall. But this is so simple and so easy that anybody can do this. And I just think that it's so cute and it's something that you can switch up for different holidays. They're easily removed and so you don't have to do a lot of change with your decoration to just add that little touch of fall. But look at how cute this looks all together. I think this is so darling. I love it. So for this project, I'm taking some painter sticks and I am measuring them out for how long I want to cut them. So I'm making some kind of like crate pumpkins and you can see that I have like four sticks and some, five sticks and some, just kind of depends on the size I want my pumpkin. But you can cut it down with a miter saw. Somebody pointed out to me that this is a miter saw, <laughs> which I thought since it fit on my table that I just called it a table saw, but it is a miter saw. But you can use a hand one or an electric one, power tool, whatever you've got. And I'm just going to put a little popsicle stick in between each of these to create that little uh, crate type of look. And then I just take another little piece that I have cut down and put that on the back to make a little palette. You could probably even use just palette signs from Dollar Tree, but I wanted these different sizes. So now I'm going to measure around each of them because I wanna make it a box. So I am going to cut the little sizes on my painter sticks down to match the size on the box. And by taping these sticks together, they cut super fast and super easy. So that was kind of a, a good idea to do that. So try that if you're cutting lots of painter sticks together. So I'm just going to super glue the sides onto all of these little boxes here. They just look like little, I guess, palette crates or palette, I, I don't even know, but <laughs> I just thought they looked really cute and thought it was such a fun idea and the three-dimensional look to them. So I'm going to paint them in the three colors that I have been using most of the season, and that is the moss, pumpkin, and plaster. Actually, I don't think I use plaster now that I say that. <laughs> it's the pumpkin and the moss in Waverly Chalk Paint, and then I think I use mineral on this pumpkin right here. So I absolutely think that that color matches so well. I take a little detail brush to go in between to make sure that I get all that little spaces. And also in the corners, like on the back and stuff, you'll just need a little detail brush. Spray paint would probably work great too if you wanted to do that. Um, sometimes you just don't have, you know, like orange spray paint on hand. So if, if you do, then great. And you can do them whatever colors would match your decor also. So this is just a little handle off of a little sponge brush and I thought it would work perfect for the stems. The Dollar Tree handles are a little bit bigger than like ones you get on Amazon or Hobby Lobby. So I was just showing you the size difference there. So I just cut a couple of them in half. So I have three stems for my pumpkins and I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper. I use a nail file to kind of soften those edges so they're not so sharp where you cut them. And I'm going to do two green stems and then one stem with my antique Waverly wax. Now this would be completely optional, but I do like to distress a lot of things. If you've been here before, you know that about me, that I do love distressing. So I just go through with my little emery board and just kind of especially go over like the edges and things. And then I also take a little bit of antiquing wax and kind of just make these have a little bit of weathered look to them. So I go around all of the edges, concentrating kind of on the corners and on the slats in between. My orange one, I went a little heavy with the antiquing wax because I liked the contrast with that color. So again, this step is completely optional, but I really do like the way that it looks. Using a combination of wood glue and hot glue for that short-term, long-term hold, I glue on all three of the stems onto the pumpkin. So the handle that I used for this smaller pumpkin was one of the thinner handles, so it's a little bit uh, slimmer, I guess you would say, on the handle. 
excuse me, on the pumpkin stem. And so here I'm gluing my last one on. And then I just take some raffia and I just tie that onto, I just slip it on. So I started tying it, slipped it onto the stem and then just kind of crinkled it up, cut it to size however I wanted it to make it look really good. You could even do just a bow. You could do burlap ribbon. Customize it to what you like. I just really like the way that the raffia looked on here. Here are my palette, crate, whatever you want to call them, pumpkins. I love how these turned out. And if you notice, I did one of them with the slats going sideways where the other two, the slats are going up. I just like the contrast of that. I thought these were super cute. It took three packages of paint sticks was all, so $3 for these pumpkins. I love how this project turns out. So I hope that you do too. But I'm just taking some wheat that I purchased at Hobby Lobby. I purchased three bundles of it. I did not end up using all three. Buy it when it's on 50% off. There's no need to pay full price. Uh, if you happen to have access to any other type of grain, barley, wheat, triticale, anything like that, even like foxtail, um, something like weeds that grow on the side of the road, you can easily stop and, and pick some of those or use anything that you have like that, any type of uh, decorative grass you might have in your garden when you're ready to trim it down for the fall. Anyway, I'm just taking these and what I'm doing is you just take any size of canister that you would like. I liked the square shape of this particular one, so that's why I chose this. And I cut these down to the size, the length that I want. And I just use some hot glue along the edge of the jar. And I just one by one take these and place them with the hot glue. It's so simple and so easy and I love how this turns out. I would like to say that right now would be a really good point to add a couple of rocks to your jar that you're using to help give it a little bit of stability. You can add them later, but right now is the perfect time to add them. So after I get all of my pieces of wheat here, I want to make a little decorative bow. So I do take some of this chicken wire ribbon that I picked up at Hobby Lobby and be very careful with this. You should probably wear gloves when you use this. I have worked with chicken wire a few times and um, had sometimes not end so well. So I should have learned my lesson, but this went okay for me. I just used some wire cutters to cut it. And then I did just kind of wind on the back side of it. I just kind of wound the little loose edges together to do um, to get it to hold and I did two layers of this because I'm going to put a ribbon around the middle where these two pieces join if that makes sense you'll see what I do here in just a moment and I do apologize because my uh, camera was being very finicky this day so I do just take a piece of this ribbon and I just glue it all around you can see how that covers the middle and then I do make another bow out of this same ribbon that I did lose the footage for again I do apologize for that but you've seen me make some bows before you can do whatever type of bow you want and then I just glue that onto the front and I did use another little black and cream ribbon to kind of embellish it a little more but look at how cute this looks I love this I think this is going to be so fun kind of a good transition piece between summer and fall in my opinion this could even be something that you might leave out year-round in your house what do you guys think of this one this project can be completed with complete Dollar Tree items. So I have this little wood round that I got from the crafter uh, square section and then a wooden sign. And I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want my sign to end because I'm going to place that wood round on the top of it. And then I knew I wanted my next portion of the wood block to be just a teeny bit longer. So you can just kind of eyeball it. That's literally what I did. I didn't do any specific measurements. And then I just cut the two cuts on this. So I'm left with three pieces of this wood block sign and I'll use two of them for this project and I use one more for another project. 
And then guys, look at what this is. It's a Jenga block, like one of the tumbling tower blocks that I found at Dollar Tree finally. If you're new to my channel, I have been looking for these in my Dollar Tree for over a year and haven't seen them. So I finally got some. I paint one of the pieces of the block white, one of them black, and then I also paint my little tumbling tower black as well. So I'm cutting off the little twine piece of this little wood round and I use some plaster to fill in that little hole. However, I did not necessarily need to do that and you'll see why in just a moment here. But the block or the wood round rather is going to be painted orange and I do decide to go around the trim, the edge and paint that with black. With my cutting machine, I did cut this cute little witch out and with her little broom, I can place that right over that little hole where I use the plaster so you can see why I didn't need to necessarily do that. And so I put her on the round and then for my blocks, I cut out the words Hocus Pocus and I alternated the colors depending on what color block they were going to be on. And so I just go ahead and adhere those to each of my blocks. If you know anything about me, you know that I cannot freehand anything. So I am totally embracing the cutting machine or rub on transfers, things like that, water slide decal paper, anything to help me not have to freehand anything. So I just used some E6000 and some hot glue to affix those together. And then what I will do is I'm taking my tumbling tower block, as you can see here, and I'm going to put that onto my round first and then glue the tumbling tower block with the round already on it onto the um, base of the, the other blocks there. And then I do take a Q-tip to go in and just kind of touch up the black paint around that edge where some of the orange was peeking through. To me, this completely screams Halloween. Not only is it one of my most favorite movies, I just love the colors of this and I think it is so fun. It looks like a cute little snow globe sitting on the top of this. I absolutely love this one. I think this is the most adorable little frame from Dollar Tree. It has the cute little wooden um, out frame of it, but then the inside is a corrugated metal that has this cute little clip on there. So fun for pictures and things. So I am just taking one of the Dollar Tree calendars and we're going to use some pictures off of the back of them. I'm sure that you've seen a lot of different crafters use the little back squares for so many different things. So this is just another little something that you could do. I thought it would be perfect for a tiered tray. So I do just take some scrapbook paper and I have these fun little scissors that are also from Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to cut a shape out here that will fit underneath that clip there and kind of let a little bit of that metal show through. And then I will use my little square from the calendar and then some other little pieces of scrapbook paper and some little embellishments on here. I do two. I'm going to do one with the apple picture and then one with a pumpkin picture. And I thought it would be fun to kind of swap them out or you could do several of them and kind of have them to swap out for different seasons. I have these cute little leaves that I got at Hobby Lobby. I thought this set was so cute and I have used these leaves on so many different little things. So I just used some regular school glue stick. The purple glue stick is awesome. I absolutely love it, but that's how I get everything to stick. When it comes to the leaves though, I do use super glue to make sure that those stay on really, really good. I do put a little bit of a twine bow on the clip. I thought that just kind of added a little bit to it. I thought that was super cute. I think these are so perfect for a tiered tray. Uh, you could put any type of quote or saying or anything that you wanted to. If you see those frames, definitely pick some up because there are so many different things you can do with them. Same thing with these calendars. If you find these calendars, pick them up because there are so many different things to do with them. But this one, I just put the leaves over on the side. I think that they were just really cute there. I just kind of made them a little bit different. I just think these turned out so fun. Here's the apple picture. I think this turned out so cute. And I love that I have the versatility to change these. Here is the pumpkin and the leaves i think this one is also so cute this is what's going on my tiered tray today 
don't forget that I'm on Instagram also. I love to meet new Insta friends, so I would love for you to come over and say hi, check out my page, and see all the latest projects that I'm working on. I'll be sure and leave a link down in my description box so you can easily find me. I got this cute charger plate at Hobby Lobby. So I think they run about $1.99. And I take this false scrapbook paper and I am just pressing it onto the rim of the bottom of the charger, so on the back side. And this just gives me a little bit of a template, you can see there, so I know where to cut out for the circle. So I'm just going to cut this out and this is going to be placed in the center of the charger. In my stash, I have this little bag of wooden shapes that I picked up at Hobby Lobby, and I just take three wooden ovals out of that, and I just paint them with the pumpkin color, all three of them, and then I also take a little craft stick and get a little end uh, cut up to be kind of like my little stem to the pumpkin. I do go around the edges with some antiquing wax. This is more not necessarily to distress, although that is a you know, added bonus. It's more to give some definition to each of these little ovals. So when I glue them together, uh, you can kind of see the definition of all three pieces. This is going to make up a little pumpkin. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. You can see what I'm doing here on those two pieces. And then I put that middle piece in while the glue is still warm. I do kind of ply them around to make sure they get the shape that I want. Then I'm just going to glue my little stem that I painted green there on the back side. And then on the front of the charger, I do just use some Mod Podge here and I go all the way around and I do just place my paper in with the Mod Podge. I do put a little bit of the Mod Podge on the back of the paper to help give it a bond, a, a good bond. I have had pretty good luck with the Mod Podge and doing this um, technique right here. I know a lot of different DIYers have had a lot of trouble with it. I swear by my Mod Podge roller. I will put the link in my description box for this, but I feel that that really helps. It will push out the excess Mod Podge and I just take a baby wipe and kind of go around the edge there, as you can see, to clear off any excess there. So then we have this cute little pumpkin and I'm just going to make a little twine bow to go at the top of it. And so I just do that by wrapping the twine around my fingers and then taking another piece and tying it around the middle to tie it off and give that bow some cute little tails. In my thrift store finds, I have this little leaf off of another pumpkin that I had found that I thought would be really cute to add to this. You could easily cut a leaf out of scrapbook paper or skip this completely, but I thought it was just a little detail that was kind of fun. So I do glue that on along with that twine bow to give my pumpkin a little bit more um, embellishment. And I just think that this really kind of sets it off. So I do just carefully glue that bow on there. And then I'm just going to put some hot glue on the back of the pumpkin. And that's, and you can see what I do here. It's not rocket science. Look at how cute it is. I just love this. I think this is going to be so cute in my China hutch. So much fun. What do you guys think of this one? I know that every Hobby Lobby is different, but in my Hobby Lobby, they had tons of these little, um, they're not really yard stakes. They're more for like your pots or your plants. And they had a bunch of these different wooden designs and I thought they were so cute. And so I took, so I have three here, but I use, I end up only using two of these little wooden ones, but I just unscrew the stakes on the back of them. So I stuck with ones that were wooden rather than the metal. Cause I'm not really sure how I would get the little stakes off the metal ones without having to have some really big wire cutters. But I'm just going to take these little flat wood pumpkins and sand off the words because I am going to paint them. I do one in the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint and the other one in moss Waverly chalk paint. And then I go in and just paint like the green stem on the orange one and then I use my antiquing wax to do um, a brown stem on this green one. You'll see me do that here. Thank you. 
So now we're gonna take some nautical rope from Dollar Tree and I'm going to hot glue this onto the back of five of these pumpkins. I do three of the white textured pumpkins and then the two that I painted. And right now I'm not really measuring the length of the rope uh, strands. I do that kind of once I get it together and then I will cut it off from the top if that makes sense. So that way you're not having to like undo the glued portion of this. So I just take all five and hot glue the back or the rope onto the back of each of them. I do stop and take a minute to do a little twine bow on the two pumpkins that I painted. I thought that added a little bit of texture and then I also decided it needed a little more texture. So I go in with some antiquing wax and I do my typical distressing of those. So I love to add texture to things like that. Now I'm just kind of laying these out to kind of get an idea of the length or how I want them to fall. They will kind of clump together when they fall unless you glue them together, which would be totally fine too, but I really just kind of wanted a more free flowing feel. Um, and then I'm just taking one of the strands of rope here after I have the desired length on each of those and I hot glue it and you can see I'm just wrapping it around and then I kind of will go back down and double it up so it's a thicker wrap there. And then I will just glue this down and that will make that portion nice and secure and just kind of gives it that little tied look. And then with the top ones, I trim them all to the same length, except for one I leave longer. And then I kind of loop these over. There's probably a lot of better ways to do this. So if you have a better idea or can come up with something different, definitely do this. I was just kind of in the moment like, huh, I probably could have come up with a smarter way to do this, but it got the job done. So I'm just using some hot glue to glue down those three strands right there. And then I am going to take that longer one and then just add on to where I wound that first rope, if that makes sense. It's probably better for you just to kind of watch how I'm doing this here. Here is this cute little piece hanging. I think this is so darling, I absolutely love it. I think if you have like a peg shelf or something like that somewhere or even from your door, I think this would just be a darling little addition. What do you guys think of this one? This project is so easy. It does just require a few items from Dollar Tree. So I am taking a little bit of foam core and then this is a frame from a shadow box from Dollar Tree that I had used the background on another DIY. So I just match the frame up to the corner of that foam core board. That will give me as straight of line as I need. So I am just going to cut that out with an X-Acto knife. You may need to trim this down just a little bit so it will slide right into your frame. But I will just clean out the little edges of the frame there. And then I have this handy little vacuum I recently got that I love. I'll leave a link to that down in my description box. But what we're going to do with this piece of foam core board that I've cut out is I have some removable wallpaper that I bought on Amazon. It looks like some faux barn wood or shiplap or something like that. So I am just going to cut it to size so it can fold over the edges. And then it's just a matter of peeling off the back and then slipping this, just sticking it down. You're not slipping anything. You're gonna stick this down onto it and then you're going to fold over the edges. I do use my Mod Pod roller, Mod Podge roller, let's say that right. <laughs> but that's not necessary. I think you could easily just uh, smooth that out with your fingers would be just fine. I do just cut the corners here to make sure that it's kind of like wrapping a present, getting those edges nice and secure. It will be covered a little bit by the frame when you slip it into that, so you don't have to be super exact. So I just put a little bit of hot glue right around all of the edges on the back of that frame and then just stick it on top of the foam core board that I have there and then just push that down. And then for an added little bit of security there, I do just go around the edges and put another little layer of hot glue on there just to make sure that the edges and the hot glue are all connecting and it is going to stay in place.
Dollar Tree had these really cute little maple leaves in their fall selection this year, so I did just grab a package of those. I didn't show, but I do use a little bit of spackle to cover in the hole there. They're meant more like for like a garland or an ornament or tag or something. So I did cover that in so I would have a solid leaf without the little hole in the top. And I'm just using some antiquing wax to kind of with a baby wipe to just kind of go over this to give it a little light stain. I cut just a little couple pieces of foam core board to give this a little bit of a three-dimensional look so it pops out. I just cut those to size and then I glue those onto the back of my leaf. And then I just put the glue on the back of those little pieces of foam core board to glue them to the background. The front of this was pretty beat up, so instead of painting it, I did decide just to embrace the distressed look. I do go with my emery board. You could use some sandpaper easily to do this, just to kind of give it a little bit more even of a distressed look. I think this is the perfect touch of neutral fall to add to your home. It would be so simple and easy for you to recreate and get such a darling look. This is a perfect project if you don't want to necessarily do obvious Halloween in your house, but maybe want to just incorporate Halloween colors. So I got this little firework pillar at my local thrift store and I'm just taking out, if you can see that rope just popped right out of there, had some little wire in the rope there. And then I'm just going to clean this up by wiping it down really good. We're just going to give this a paint job and add a couple little details to it to make it feel a little bit more Halloweenish. After I give this a thorough couple of coats of white or plaster chalk paint, I believe it is, I tape off some stripes and then I just take this out to my little spray paint studio, which as we all know <laughs> is just a box that our bathroom sink came in, but it works perfect to spray paint things in to stop the spread of that spray paint going everywhere. But I just spray paint it black and it really only took one coat of the black spray paint to get really good coverage. And I have these two little square wooden, um, I don't know, wooden squares, I guess you'd just say they were, that I got at Dollar Tree. They come in like a pack of six. So I spray paint those because I am going to put those on either end. So here comes the satisfying part of me tearing off my paint to reveal my crisp, clear, what we hope are crisp and clear lines um, from the black and white stripes. After I reveal my lines, I decide that this is such a very rustic pillar, like this piece of wood has a lot of little blemishes and knots and things in it. So I decide to embrace that and I distress it. That of course is a completely optional thing, but it does match my decor, so that's why I did this. And then I do, since I distress the pillar, I go in and distress each of these little wood squares for the top and the bottom of the pillar. Using some E6000 and hot glue, I then go in and glue the top and the bottom on. So what you'll see I do here is I have my pillar standing up like this. I place my square on and then turn it upside down to kind of uh, measure it and make sure that I get it centered really well. And I do that when I glue both ends on. Here's what this pillar looks like with a cute little pumpkin on the top of it. You can see how this definitely is not obvious Halloween, but using the correct colors and everything, it definitely brings that Halloween vibe into your decorating. Almost darling yarn that's 
was the perfect pumpkin color at the craft store the other day and I thought how can I make a little teeny pumpkin and it kind of came to me that oh you could probably just use a pool noodle so I do kind of cut this down to the size that I want and then I do just kind of trim around the edges so it's not such a harsh line there so that way it's kind of a softer more of a pumpkin shape I guess you would say um, it doesn't have to be super exact you can kind of once you get the yarn on here kind of have a little bit of leeway like it kind of just looks like a pumpkin because it's orange and you put a little stem on it so you'll kind of see what I'm talking about but I do kind of trim this out to kind of make sure that it at least sits flat so that way you've got a good um, surface to begin with this is the yarn that I found I just love this it is a thicker yarn you guys I know nothing about yarn so if my yarn lingo is off here I do apologize because I don't I don't really deal with yarn that much so I don't I don't know all the terminology, but anyway, I absolutely loved this color. So I do just kind of unravel it here and I unravel quite a bit because I'm thinking if I'm going to wrap this around, I need a lot to cover so you don't see any of this fluorescent yellow or green or whatever color you would call this. So I just, once you loop it through, I just tie it off and then just cut that little uh, hanging piece off there. Uh, and that's how I started out. And then I just put a bunch of the painter's tape on the end of it so that way you can kind of feed it through and trust me by the end you're going to be glad that you put that on the end so that way because it gets pretty thick in the center there so that way you have something nice to be able to pull it through so again this is just as much as like I put it through I pull it all the way and kind of line it up so that way it stays pretty uniform you know it I want to say it took me about a half an hour to do this so it doesn't take a whole long time but sit and watch like a program while you're doing this and you just pull it through be very very careful not to get this tangled up because that is extremely easy to do but I just pull it through one side and then pull it all the way, turn it and put it through the other, just looping it around. It's not rocket science. It's so easy. And you kind of can see when it comes together, I'm like, oh, this is going to be really cute. I really do think this turned out so fun. And I do, um, I go all the way around the bottom layer, making sure that that is completely covered. You can see there. And then I just kind of go in with some extra all the way around until I feel like I can't fit any more through. And then as I put it down, I kind of smush it a little bit. I think it's so cute. And I do for this one, for the stem, I do take, um, just a little bit of a handle off of one of those foam brushes that I had left over. I started saving those foam brushes and just cutting the little handles to use as little extra dowel pieces when you need them. So I just cover this in antiquing wax and then I do take a little bit of hot glue and just stick it down into the pumpkin itself. That way it stays really well there. I just think this turns out so cute. Here's a look at this cute little pumpkin in my tiered tray. I think this turned out absolutely darling and it's so simple that I think anybody could do this. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you feel inspired or at least were entertained. If you made it this far, I would love for you to comment with your favorite fall tradition. Remember to like and subscribe and as always, be safe, be smart, be nice, be happy. Choose to have a good day because you are amazing. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed the video that you just saw, here's another one that you might enjoy. And as always, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks so much for watching and have an amazing day.